Talk about a blast from the past, huh? Yeah, it's Brayden here, and today we're taking a look at the Secret Saturdays Cryptid Collector's Pack. Um, yeah, this is a quite an old toy from back in 2008, I believe, is when this set was released. Uh, now, for those who don't know what the Secret Saturdays was, it was an animated series that aired on Cartoon Network about this family of scientists who, um, who, uh, try to stop, um, protect the world and uncover the secrets of cryptids or unknown animals, basically animals unknown to science. I enjoyed the show quite a bit when I was younger, and I just recently rewatched the whole series, and I still think it holds up decently. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's good. Now, this show naturally, like a lot of things, uh, released by Cartoon Network at the time, had a toy line, and I actually collected some toys from this toy line, most of which have since been donated away. This, this set, I bought this new. I bought this on a website I believe called the Action Figure Archive, or something like that, um, which I bought these guys on. However, I was able to dig up two of my older figures, which I will also briefly be talking about here. Now, one of these two is just a repaint of the of uh, one of the figures that I've got here, in the form of Komodo here, who is pretty standard, small, he's a Komodo dragon. Uh, now, I will detach the other one from his base to show you the difference, is that this one is made entirely of this dark green with a bit of light green plastic, while this guy is made of this partially translucent plastic. This is to simulate the fact that in the show, Komodo could camouflage, like he could ch change color like a chameleon. Now, both these figures have the exact same points of articulation. This is a toy line made by Mattel, a company that I have quite a bit of experience with, considering the Jurassic Park figures I usually review. He's got... both have movement in the legs, not a whole lot. Um, the head can turn, though, unless you want to get an Exorcist Komodo Dragon, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. And then the tail, well, the tail is on a joint, I mean, is on a little uh, joint, but I'm not entirely sure if it's capable of motion. Well, it is, but not a whole lot, and that just looks wrong. So I'm going to bend that back into position and move him off to the side so he can... Camouflage and Komodo here also came with the card for him. Now, this card... This card uh, was supposed to be used with another toy in this line called the Cryptopedia, which I may have had when I was younger, but I think I might have broken it, which is why I don't have it anymore. Basically, you would stick this into the machine... Uh, and then you'd get a little data file on the cryptid in question. Um, now, what I also like about these is that these can act as bases. There is a... There are two spots on there with foot shapes, and there are these little holes in the feet, which I was actually trying to wonder what those were... kind of trying to figure out what those were for. On my Komodo figure... figure... And while he doesn't sit on them particularly well, partially because I have to keep holding the camera while I'm doing this, you can put him onto his little base. And I mean, it's, it's helpful to keep the base intact. Now, the other figure I managed to keep from my younger days was this, the Alkali... Oh, I knocked him over. The Alkali Lake Monster. Now, you will notice he does have some glue residue on certain parts of his body, because I did I do think he fell apart, and I had to glue him back together at one point. Now, he does have some articulation as well. Uh, his front limbs do move. Uh, head does not move at all, unfortunately. Not even an opening mouth or anything. The back fins can also be moved. Um, and the tail... The tail can just swing around... And you can sort of use it to act as like a third leg if you want to get him in certain poses. You'll notice on this guy, I've had this guy for a long time because I bought him back, well, I got him as a gift back in the day. And uh, he's very, very loose. Now, the Alkali Lake Monster 
Well, let's just see what the book I have says on it. Yes, I actually have a book. I ordered this off of Amazon, and this book not only came with, well, the book, but it also came with a neat little poster. And I actually that's actually kind of cool. I was not expecting that to be in there, because I knew the book had a poster in it, but I was expecting the poster to be long gone, and he's right there on it. But, yeah, if we were to take a look in this book, I'm going to have to find the page he was on, which will take me just a second. Uh, ah, here we go. This cryptid lives in fresh water and can grow to lengths of more than 300 feet. The shape is similar to that of a crocodile, and its tip has a twisted horn on the tip of its snout. Um, not sure how accurate that is to the real cryptid report. Um, I believe from what I've discovered, this cryptid itself is generally agreed to be a hoax. Uh, that it was hoaxed by somebody. But it's a cool little guy, nonetheless. He's a pretty cool little monster. Okay, moving him off to the side, and moving you off to the side, because I want to review the three new figures. Now, all three of these guys were also available in the regular toy line, and of them, two of them are only available in this color scheme in this set. These two guys were repainted for this set. This guy, as far as I know, is identical to the single release of his figure, but I do not actually have the single release of this guy, so if he does have any differences from his... Single release, they're not too much different. Now, I'm actually going to cover him first. This is the Dua. Or, if you are more familiar with, uh, Pterosaurian cryptids. Oh, that didn't sound nice. The Ropen. I did do some research to try and figure out what the Dua and the difference between the Dua and the Ropen is, if there is any. As far as I know, they're basically identical. Now, you can either pose him like that, uh, stuck into his little base like that, or you can pose him like this. And I mean, he stands fine. He does look a little goofy like this, and I'm not even going to get into the fact that this is super inaccurate for a pterosaur to be standing like this. Though they did give him picna fibers. That's actually commendable, even if this is supposed to be a fictional species. Uh, alternatively, you really can only lie him down like this, and that really is one of the bigger killing points of this figure, is he doesn't have a whole lot of articulation. His tail can move, as you can see, and his wings, which are basically connected to the whole body, can move. Sort of. This is about as high as they will go, which I will admit does look better than the way I had him before, but it also causes you to really notice some... Basically, from the side or from the top, he looks okay. From the bottom, no. Oh. Um, he can still stand like that, which is kind of surprising, and he also comes, does come with this little stand here, which, um, was actually a pain in the butt to get out of the box, but the stand can be attached to his stomach, and then by extension, attached down here. Which does look pretty nice, I will admit. I do like when f toy lines do this, especially since there are no footholds for him to stand in on this uh, little card here. Uh, he's the only one of the set that doesn't have any. But he's pretty cool. Not the best of the set, but alright. <sighs> Moving on to the Amarok. Which, if you don't know, is a giant wolf creature from, I think, Inuit mythology. Um, basically, just a really huge wolf um, whereas the show turns it into basically this werewolf-like creature. Uh, you can detach him from the base, but that's where you admit the, mean, the main problem of this guy. He cannot stand to save his life. Now, the legs are actually posable. Um, hold on, I gotta check this. No, they're not on ball joints, but they are on a reasonable swivel. However, there's really no spot that you can get him in where he can hold himself up well. You can experiment around and maybe get him standing somewhat, but if you lose the card, you're kind of screwed. You can also move his tail backwards too. Nope, that does not help in the slightest. You cannot even make that into sort of a third leg. Um, his arms are also movable, and these are actually on, well, they're not on ball joints, they're on separate little swivel joints. It's pretty jacked, I will admit. But, um, yeah, he's not particularly, uh, mobile for the most part, unfortunately. Uh, his... 
He has two swivel joints in his arms, a single swivel for each leg, and that's about, and a joint in the tail. What I really am especially annoyed by is the head has absolutely no articulation. Mouth doesn't close, mouth doesn't open, nothing. But you can stick his uh, big old foot sole here into that spot. Nope, he does like to come detached quite a bit, unfortunately. And unfortunately, there really is no really good way you can get him. Well, that looks okay. But of the set, this guy might be my least favorite. I don't hate him by any means, but the fact that he can't stand, a figure that can't stand up, a bipedal figure that can't stand up, that's always going to be a negative point for me. And then finally, of the, th the set, we have the Tapir Ayuara, which is a creature from, supported from the Amazon Basin, sort of said to resemble like a tapir or a jaguar, which does not look at all like either of the two things. This thing is, this thing looks more like a, the website I got this from actually called him a hyena, which is kind of closer. I think he's intended to be like a Masonic kid, like a hoofed carnivore, which is actually kind of cool that the show's writers are aware of those. Now, his articulation is something I actually haven't tested yet, but his head does move side to side. Alas, the jaw is still unable to be opened. Uh, tail actually does move. That's kind of surprising. And the legs. Uh, well, the back legs have some swiveling movement. The front legs... Okay, they are mobile. They're just really stiff. At least that one was. But overall, he's not too bad. This whole set's not too bad. Um, I don't know where you would find this set for a cheaper price than I got it. This thing cost me 30 bucks when I bought it. But if you do manage to find it and you think you're interested, uh, you might as well pick it up. This is an old toy line, so I don't doubt you're... So I doubt it's going to be easy to find some of these guys nowadays. But if you want them, go right ahead and grab them.